What's up guys, it's Max here. I hope everyone's doing super well. I certainly am. I just finished this book, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the one I've been reading this week. Uh, it took me five days to read it, Monday to Saturday early morning. And uh, I just wanted to say that it's absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing read about Nike and how Phil Knight started in the 1960s, what started out as Blue Ribbon Incorporated and it was basically a company that sourced Japanese shoes and sold them in the US and then he had this crazy dream on taking on Puma and Adidas and he ended up doing it and uh, then the book is a memoir all the way up to 1980s early 1980s when Nike uh, went public so they went for the initial public offering and this is kind of where the book cuts off before the very last chapter uh, which is modern time Phil Knight's talking about the process of writing the book and what happened to Nike and the other characters in the book so, sort of th 30 years after so 2010. The question is whether you need to read this book or not. So if you have any ambition of uh, entrepreneurship or starting a business I'm not necessarily in that camp but I like I like the origin stories basically. I think if you have an ambition to start a business uh, probably this would be an amazing book to read. It's very inspiring in this way uh, and it also shows quite a realistic picture of how difficult it can be and how mentally draining starting a company can be for you. So definitely if you are, if you want to start a business, if you're interested in athletics, if you like Nike just like me, now I feel that I'm much more connected to the company. Maybe this was one of the aims of Phil Knight of writing this book. We never know. Anyways, I think if, if, if you like biographies and if you like, as I said, origin stories, uh, then definitely this book is for you. I just wanted, I was thinking the long and hard about how to structure this book review. I didn't want it to be too dry. I didn't want it to be something that you can kind of read online and look up on like the New York Times or something like that. So I just, I decided to give you five lessons that I took away uh, from this book. They, some of them are more tailored to me and to what my life is about. Uh, so apologies, but maybe you can relate to some of the points I'm going to make. Uh, if you don't want to listen to the review, that's fine. I just want to say that this is a, a good read. It's nice. It's gripping. It's probably, I read it on the train uh, on my commute to and from work, but I think it would be a good idea to read it before bed. Uh, and in the morning it's quite inspirational and it's good to dive into something like this and if you want to stick around for the review these are five lessons that I took away from shoe dog so lesson one is that you have to keep searching for what you want to do in this life no matter how old you are so this the story here begins with a uh, Phil Knight being 24 years old just graduated from Stanford uh, trained as an accountant and having absolutely no idea what he wants to do with his life now I want to emphasize 24 is not supposed to be the number like you can be you can be 24 27 32 35 the idea is that you don't have to take the most logical solution the something that is coming to you like the accounting job that would have been lined up for Phil Knight if he didn't decide to pursue uh, this crazy business idea of uh, creating a shoe company and something that I'm going to address later in this review is that he actually did end up uh, working as, a, as an accountant and running Nike, which is which is quite an accomplishment really But what I wanted to say is that you know, he was 24 He had he still had no idea what to do so many people now want to know exactly what to do with their lives and want to have some sort of vector some sort of direction uh, when they're just out of university or just out of college I just want to say that and this is also what Phil Knight emphasizes in the end is that you really have to keep searching for what makes you fulfilled and what makes you happy um, so it's going to be up to you what you choose and you don't have to you know just kind of sit around do nothing and be searching you know you have to go taste stuff go try stuff work here work there try to understand travel something or work a full-time job and then have a bunch of side hustles but uh, it was definitely quite uh, liberating quite inspiring for me to know that you know you can be 24 or whatever the age you are you can have no idea what to do and then uh, you can build something as astonishing and as grand as, uh, as Nike. So this is the first lesson. And lesson number two is that you shouldn't always seek balance. And um, 
this is something also that I posted on Instagram and I wrote a blog post about it because this is just such a powerful idea. In this, in this culture that we're living in, at least that I'm living in, there are, on one side of the equation, there is hard work that kind of everyone is drawn to as a variable of success, understandably so. And on the other end of the spectrum, there is this balance, right? You have to live a balanced life. You see more negativity, more hate, uh, more judgment coming at people that don't have it all balanced out, that go and obsess over one thing and then the other parts of their lives are like, you know, complete uh, chaos and you see people kind of judging that. So the, the idea that Phil Knight uh, throws at us is the fact that you shouldn't be seeking balance all the time. Maybe sometimes what you actually need is more imbalance. So Phil Knight was working at Price Waterhouse. Price Waterhouse? PwC. Basically, PwC back in the day, it's an, it's an accounting firm, consultancy firm. And then he was working there as an accountant six days a week, full time. Uh, in the free time, he was running Blue Ribbon, uh, which is currently known as Nike Inc., right? So he was working full-time as an accountant, which is, you know, quite a draining job and the job that has a cognitive load on you. It's not easy at all. And at the same time, he was running this, running this, this company that actually needed a lot of his time and a lot of his effort and a lot of his energy. And that what he was saying is that his life was definitely imbalanced, no question about it but he was actually looking for more of that imbalance. And then this is how he ended up uh, actually quitting his accounting job and then going full in um, on Nike. Also, I think there is a lot of uh, narrative of quitting your job to do your thing. And uh, I think in nine out of 10 cases, and this book is, just proves it, uh, this is probably not what you should be doing. What you should be doing is you shouldn't throw everything out of the window you should cap your downside and you should try to have your company and your your job intertwined in a way. So basically what Phil Knight did is as he was working as an accountant, he was uh, helping and uh, auditing and things of that nature, a lot of different companies. So he started to spot patterns of what makes companies succeed and what makes companies fail. And then he used that accountancy knowledge to actually further the success of Nike as a company. So that I think it's a, it's a great idea and it's a very tacit point of, you know, whether you are working full time to finance your lifestyle or your family's lifestyle, whether you're working full time to actually finance your business or you're working, working full time for the status or whatever the reason might be, if you have two things, a side hustle and full time business, I think it would be amazing to try to actually take some of that value and some of that knowledge uh, and some of that benefit that you get in your full-time job and try to somehow uh, put it or channel it into your business. I think that that's, that's a great idea. So you have to be self-aware about how much balance you actually need. Like Phil Knight was saying that he didn't need any more balance. This wasn't on his psyche. Like this wasn't something that he wanted. He didn't want you know, more socializing, he didn't want to look at the nature, he didn't want more traveling for, uh, for fun, you know, he did a lot of business travel, but not traveling for himself. So that I think that you have to know yourself, if you feel that you actually need balance, then definitely go for it, because you will burn out and it, and it won't be pretty, I don't think so. But then if you, if you feel that you don't need any more balance, and maybe what you need is actually more imbalance, then don't be afraid to put it out there and to go for it, because probably the answers that you're searching for are going to be waiting for you there in the end. The third lesson that I learned from the book is the importance of the team and I think this is this is a big one for me and this is definitely something that uh, I have to get better at and something that I have to engrave in my mind. So Phil Knight is talking about he was uh, one of the two co-founders of uh, Blue Ribbon which ended up being Nike in the beginning and he talks about the process of finding the right employees, finding the right partners and hiring them and working with them. And, you know, as I progress through the book, it becomes so clear that how imperative the team is and how important it is to surround yourself with the right, with the right people. I know it's a cliche, but it's just something that has to be implemented in your life somehow. So on one side, Phil had a very supportive 
family. I mean, of course, they had their arguments about the how much time he spends at home and things of that nature. But uh, you know, his wife and uh, and kids were the source of his joy and source of his peace at the times when his his business was basically on fire. And on the other side, uh, his colleagues and the board members and employees. It's just, they're, at first, they're very funny, it seems, from the book. And uh, they have many funny stories and they were having fun while building this company. But uh, his colleagues were also a huge part of his life, his second family, and a big support system for him. Fourth lesson of the book is the importance of mental resilience when it comes to doing something that either hasn't been done before, something that is uh, unconventional, or just something that is quite kind of brave um, and bold. So at many points, and when you read the book, and I hope you'll read it, when you read the book, uh, you will notice that at many points uh, in the history of Nike as a company and uh, in the history of Phil Knight as a man, there were you know, points where things were hitting the fan like in, in a bad way, in, in an extremely intense way. And I can think of a few. One of them was a legal battle with a Japanese uh, company that was actually the the manufacturer of the shoes in the beginning and then he almost lost uh, Nike back then and then there was another huge battle with uh, actually the US government and a law of uh, American selling price there was this archaic law that was basically lobbied by Adidas and Puma in order to take out Nike and the fine was 25 million dollars when they when Nike was making uh, you know maybe maybe 20 or 30 dollars in revenue so this is a completely lethal punch and uh, Phil actually explains it in, in an interesting way so a few times in the book he was saying that he was about to panic he was about to have a panic attack and completely lose his shit but it's interesting how he didn't do that because other people were losing it in front of him so one time it was Penny his wife and one time it was one of his co-workers so that he was almost about to completely lose his mind but then he saw other people falling apart and he understood that he's the last line of defense and he's the one that actually has to stay strong and has to keep this company or this family going uh, and also just on a more general point it just shows that you know if, if, if you are taking someone on or, or something uh, if you're doing something big, the bigger the ambition, the harder it's going to be mentally. The, the bigger the challenges are going to be and the more resilience you have to have. So I think it goes back to the previous point of, of having a team around you. It definitely helps. And actually the, the first lesson of, of searching for something that actually gives you energy. So with the fifth lesson, I've been thinking about which one I should, I should pick for this video. And uh, there was one on... Uh, I was thinking about on hard work and luck so Phil Knight says that luck is definitely a, a huge variable and it sometimes does excuse me and it sometimes does come down to luck but then you have to put in the hard work uh, to get that luck so I guess it's, it's kind of it's, it's quite a cheesy idea so I decided not to pick it there was something else in the end and I, I definitely urge you to read this book and uh, if you read the last chapter then you'll know what I'm talking about here and it's just the fact that no matter how successful you are, you are never insured or you can never be resilient enough or strong enough to, to, to deal with some of the more tragic you know, parts of your life, some tragedies that chances are will hit you one way or another. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say that it's, it's probably a good idea to take care and uh, you know, look after and give love to your closest social circle and, and family and things of that nature because you know no no matter how successful a business can be or how successful other ventures of yours can be there are problems right like a 25 million fine from the US government a lawsuit by a Japanese com company and then there are you know deep pr profound horrible personal tragedies and um, there's there's really no lesson more important than uh, spend time with your family and closest friends and uh, do give them the attention that they deserve because you never know what's gonna happen. Alright guys so this is the first book review uh, thank you very much for tuning in thank you very much for listening I definitely 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 advise you to get this book SAP it is absolutely amazing uh, and yeah I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that this review these five lessons that I 
uh, took out of the book for myself are in some way or form helpful for you. So thank you very much and soon I will release a video announcing the book for next week, so stay tuned, thank you.